Hi there, you're listening to Unnatural Selection, the show where we talk about newsy type stuff and things. My name is George. My name is Tom. And my name is Adam. And with our powers combined, we are Unnatural Selection. Make sure you visit us at our salubrious home on the web, unnaturalshow.com. What a difference a week makes, you know? Did you have that? So much. Felt like you had that in the barrel ready to go. Well, cut I Adam just... off at the knees so he wouldn't save back for another week. Well, yeah, but you've said it now, so I guess it was a moot point. Um, no, I was just, uh, I was just thinking about how, um, like, you know, so, like so much can change in a week. New records can be set, Rona wise. Uh, a whole news topic that we covered the week before can just pff, undo itself with uh, OnlyFans backflipping and saying, "Nah, we're going to keep the porn." Actually, turns out we were real idiots. <laughs> turns out. That's our whole business model is yeah. giving people porn. I don't know why we thought we yeah. could do otherwise. Yeah, I think um all those like silly kind of skits that every like internet comedian made and that we were sort of joshing about last episode of just they sat down and were like, All right, so what do we do other than porn? Absolutely nothing. No, we don't have a yoga teacher or something, so we might have one. We but seriously, a- also, it's yoga yeah. porn. It's the same thing. It's a yoga thing. Yeah, she does it naked. Yeah, she's bending yeah. over in front of the camera. Wet pants are a, a genre so, now um, so you, in and of yeah. themselves. So you're saying I am absolutely shafting my own income stream. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right. Uh, we won't do it then. Shafting is an excellent use of choice of words there as well. Um, Thank you. Um, there was some confusion, are, uh, depending on different, different reports. Different reports said they were doing it for... Uh, for trying to attract new funding reasons. Mm-hmm. And then OnlyFans were saying, no, 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 it's because our credit card providers won't allow us to process payments with them anymore. And that's why we're making this change. And then yeah, Mastercard, that's what we talked about a lot last week. Yeah. Mastercard was like, I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. I, It's fine. We'll ta- we're Mastercard. We'll take fucking blood money. We don't care. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mastercard straight up through them under the bus. Uh, I think like I learned that maybe about two hours after we'd stopped recording. And I was like, ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> but yeah, MasterCard straight up said, no, nope. like we didn't ask OnlyFans to do anything. So everyone's like, well, we haven't heard anything concrete from like Visa or whatever, but at least one payment provider, one of the biggins, uh, have completely thrown them under the bus. The, the uh, curse of, of us as a podcast, a newsy type, you know, things podcast where we talk about stuff on a weekly basis, generally on a Sunday night, where on the Monday mm. there's a new news cycle and everything we said literally 12 hours ago is outdated. Yeah, it is kind of uh, funny. You'd think, you'd think a weekly show, like, yeah, by the time we're talking about something, it's had a whole week to develop. So it's not very, it's not shot from the hip. Like we've heard a lot of the information, all that sort of stuff. No, no, more often than not, we uh, just only have half an idea of what's going on. And then by the time people listen to the episode, the information's entirely changed. Yeah. And, uh, or nobody great. cares at that stage because it's too late. Column A, column B, yeah, you know what? No one cares who's first. Everyone cares who's last. I don't think that's it's the same. Uh, it's like yeah. golf or yeah. something. I don't know. <laughs> Lot of score wins. I, I don't yeah. Know. Anyway, we are, uh, we are like golf in that sense. In that, yes. we are the lowest <laughs> scoring podcast. <laughs> Uh, but we do have some corkers uh, for you this week. Corkers being, of course, our continuing rant about coronavirus in Australia, which, as Tom said, setting PBs. You know, I think we mm-hmm. Australia as a whole, we've collectively watched the Olympics and the Paralympics for the last month, and we've decided to, you know, look, that we too can give our personal bests by, you know, if you're in New South Wales, you, you can, as a collection, um, you know, they're able to sort of punch that 1,200 case number a day figure that just keeps going up, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, six people died today, but that's fine. Uh, and in Victoria, we've also stopped caring uh, because now there's 92, which is per day, which was today's number, uh, which, you know, uh, I guess. Highest uh, amount uh, for this year for Victoria. Yep. We, we yeah. still record as well as New South Wales today. <laughs> Lockdown forever. Um, and, you know, like you go outside and you, you look around, you go for a bit of a, a walk or whatever and you just walk past your local park or beach or whatever's around, um, mm-hmm. you know, in a bayside area. So there's, there's beaches and stuff. But you walk around, go for a run, go for a bike ride, and it's quite clear people have what I would call COVID fatigue 
where I was in there just like real loosey goosey with regu- with um restrictions. You mean? Yeah. I noticed. I was. Um, yeah. I saw a gelati shop. It was uh, quite nice weather the other day, or yesterday, whenever it was. Just like stacks of people lining up for a gelati, and I was like, this feels extremely non-essential. <laughs> Did you get a gelati? No, I didn't. I wish I had. Um, <laughs> It looked very nice, but um, mm. well, there's nothing more Melbourneian than really liking to line up for something. <laughs> like you know, everywhere you go, if there's a queue for it, we're all like, "Oh fuck, must be worth it." Then is this for Could Messina? Be- yeah, yeah. <laughs> is, this, is, this, is this the line for Messina? Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. If you if you have to queue up for it, it must be good. Amazing. If you're here in Melbourne, I'll be here for 45 minutes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'll just be For tweeting. The- um, I'll just be tweeting at various political figures while we're standing here in line. Um, Very much so. But George, I think you know if the uh, you know hippy dippy crystals and incense shop down the road can be open, that gelati shop no, can be what? as well. Shut up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Every day, uh, my partner Crystal, and I walk past crystals, it. Hey, what was the technical term? By definition, are not essential. Crystals. <laughs> Unless it's essential oils, because we all agree those are essential. It's in the name. No, no, surely, surely he's just, you know, using hyperbole. George, it can't actually just be a shop that sells crystals. It must do other things. What else do Tom. they sell? They must sell. Oh, what else do they sell? I think they have, well, yeah, I've seen that there's crystals in there. There's nice smelling candles. Uh, I think, you know, books on spells. Books on um, spe- well, see, books on spells the, are essential. Holy really shit. Because how, do how, else how else am I going to cast a hex? How else am I going to hex my yeah, ex-boyfriend I, if I don't have access yeah. to the spell book, Tom? No, I, I don't, I don't want to be shitting on people of, of particular religious persuasions. But yeah, like they have a sign out the front that they often have, which mentions like the kind of like med- the, the, their medicinal benefit or uh-huh. something. I'm like, oh, you're claiming you're claiming that you're a health service. Are you? Like, oh, come on. Like, the ri- like you're basically the incense shop. Like, I walk past it and I can go, hmm, smells lovely today, but you you don't you don't need to be open. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry, mate. Um, I, I, I don't mean to burst your fucking bubble, but we're doing some energy healing out the back. So obviously <laughs> very essential service, okay, mate? I'm doing some Reiki, yeah. okay? I am a health practitioner. If you could just pull your fucking head in. That would be much appreciated. I'm an essential service. Crystals via click and collect. Is there a click and collect service for the crystals? So I, I might be into that. Well, you know, I, I, haven't, I haven't asked. I haven't inquired as to that because I can well and truly just walk in and uh, ask the unmasked cashier to mm. sell me one. Nice. Click and collect, be damned from Call what I've noticed. Tom. Yeah, I've almost. I can't. I, I, I actually. I couldn't call them out if I wanted to. I cannot remember the name of the shop. I just know where it is because I walk past it. Um, too many of them. Yeah, There's, almost want to take yeah. a photo and send it to Brett Sutton and just be like, "Hey, mate, <laughs> is this abiding by the guidelines?" Um, yeah, yeah. I, I definitely. I mean, certainly, when we're definitely not as bad as New South Wales, which is you know over ten times the amount of cases, daily cases. But um, hey, George. It seems like it, the, the numbers t- tend to be trending upwards rather than downwards, despite us all being in lockdown. So obviously something's not working, um, mm-hmm. whether it's you know adherence to the restrictions or just the Delta variant. It's a real motherfucker. I don't, I don't exactly know. It's but, both. I, I think yeah. it's probably the answer to that. In all honesty, and also yeah. just the this time around as well, we are completely lacking JobKeeper and all the mm-hmm. other kind of programs that they had. Like you know, people. As a lot of people have pointed out, that a lot of the cases are being spread around either at the uh, the workplaces of like essential work of essential workers or mm. in their homes. Like, and you and you know you see like spots where the the cases are popping up are often in areas uh, where more people of like lower socioeconomic status live. All these sorts of things. People are not being supported to not mm. go to work and not go out, right? It's it's uh, as everyone's been saying online. It's that pay people to stay home. There yeah. are emergency payments available in Victoria. To be to be fair, and I think New South Wales has access to some yeah. of those as well. The Victorian one, from my understanding, is like if you have to miss work to get tested or something like that, you can get like a, actually a COVID payment. disaster payments. You can get. I'm pretty yeah, sure. yeah, but I think it's just it's a real. It's a real bitch to those. Those <laughs> to, are quite quite means tested as well. It's yeah. not like with JobKeeper where it was just kind of a blanket program. Um, mm. You know, like he is he, and, and there's also nothing 
tethering you to your current job, to your workplace and stuff either, which was if there were any good parts about the job keep program, that was it. Is that, you know, the idea is you're still getting this you money keep your job. <laughs> through this workplace and you're still, you still have a relationship there. You're still tied there. Whereas with the disaster payments, you're just receiving, you know, just a, a just a welfare payment from the government. Yeah. It um, literally comes yeah. through through sending like the disaster payment. So you can go to servicesaustralia.gov.au to, to look that up. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, it comes through Centrelink. So, oh, yeah, it'll be very smooth and very, uh, yeah, very timely and simple and just, you know, so, so nice and easy to set up. Yeah, definitely. They've never gone wrong. It's going to be a great time. Um, you're going to have a game. It was like, um, what was it, Brad Hazard did that? He, he said, the, uh, New South Wales Health yeah, Minister. Yeah, yeah. He said, just like, <laughs> there was, someone was asking him about, you know, disaster payments and job keeping. This was a couple, like a month or two ago. It was like, yeah, just just go to Services Australia. Just just hit up Centrelink and see what's up. I was just like, but you're clar- like to be clear, you've announced no new funding. There's no new program that you're putting together. And it's just like, yeah, just fucking go to Centrelink. Fucking hit them up, see what's up. Like, see what's going on over yeah. at Centrelink. Like, just have a casual chat. Maybe something's changed. Have you asked if they're hiring? Yeah. <laughs> my. When, um, back in my day, when we were looking for a job, you print out a resume and you march up and you say, Mr. Manager, I've got a bunch of gumption. I would like a job, please. And they respect yeah. you for it. And then you'd have an $80,000 a year job that you'd have from that day until you retired 40 years later. And kids that these days the just don't understand what it's like to work hard and, and work hard and have gumption and stick to it. That was what... That was how I was told to get jobs. I don't know. Yeah. Obviously, that's the cliche you're going for, but yeah. I was told that. And, and yeah, in fairness, yeah, I did actually get my f- uh, second job by doing that. Yeah, well, that's because you lived in the pre-internet age because you're ancient. What are you, 32? Oh, this beard. You may as well be dead. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much Gandalf. My uh, uh, 32nd birthday is in a couple months, so... Uh... Uh, I guess I only have two months to live. I, I look forward to <laughs> celebrating with you in lockdown. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! It'll be great. Woo! We will still Se- be in lockdown. My second lockdown birthday. The Yay. worst part Boys. of a one-week lockdown is the first two months, and then after you get through that, mm. it's smooth sailing. Yeah, yeah. Then it's just Boys. smooth Boys. sailing with gin and sadness. There's a way out, though, guys. There, there is, is a way out. It's the Doherty Institute. Modeling, we can all get vaccinated. Woo! <laughs> and um, New South Wales, they've they've set some goals. You know, get six million people vaccinated, and they'll uh, start to loosen some restrictions, which uh, happened uh, this week. Ten weeks in, they got a plan. They got a plan, and uh, that's all it took. It's a so couple just, of months. Despite the rising cases, yeah, and they've, they've gone. Let's let's loosen things up a you little. You know how bit. we've got let's a thousand some, cases a, a day. We're literally setting records, doing a PB personal best. What we've decided yep. to do is loosen some restrictions. Yeah. Because we're naming We've got a little carrot. Just a little you carrot all... stick. Carrot stick. Yeah, you all deserve a little treat. <laughs> so, so to, not to get too, like... Just technically enlisting all the, yeah, all the rules. I don't, because, like, as you say, like, we talk about this stuff and it's, like, immediately out of date. But, like, basically, if you've got a bunch of vaccinated people and you're outdoors, you can gather together if it's like up to whatever it is, five people. Well, it's like five people. Yeah. But only if they're vaccinated and outside. Yeah. And like, there's so much uh, like this. Uh, who's How how are they going to police this? Well, this this is my thought. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, is when they announced this, I was like, great. So everyone's just going to go and hang out outside because like, yeah. who's going to be checking people? Like, there's no vaccination passports. There's no... Like, mm. there's no way of proving whether or not someone's been vaccinated Ooh. or, like, maybe they've had their first dose, but they haven't had their second dose yet. It's like, yeah. none and of this is method... enforceable, so people are just going to go and hang out in the park. Like, Yeah, and what method they do have for showing vaccination, because uh, my, my dad has one, he showed me, because he's now fully vaccinated. Right. Um, that little, it's like in one of the apps from the government, there's, like, this page you get that'll be, like, your name, your vaccination status. It's got, like, a oh, okay. watermark and everything. Like, it's the it's essentially the beginning of what their vaccine passport will be. Uh, and someone has already, in 10 minutes, able to show that they are easily forgeable. There you go. Uh, because this is an app designed by the current government, and I don't know who they hire to do all their app design, but, you know, COVID safe. Uh, he- I hear there's a huge security flaw in the Medicare app. Uh, and all these other sorts of things. Yeah, so very easily forgeable, apparently. Even 
able you're able to forge the like motion graphic that acts as the watermark. Right. Like they are near perfect forgeries or, that this guy was able to do real quick. Rather than paying for fake vaccine cards as some people are doing in the US, rather than putting together a fake app and or you could just go and get vaccinated and just actually be vaccinated and then yeah. and then hopefully we can have some measure of outside small grouped freedom. Freedom picnics. <laughs> freedom picnic. Freedom the, picnic. Yes, exactly. The, um, the vaccination uptake in Australia is sort of exponentially growing, but it is obviously limited by supply. So, like Victoria, they opened up to Pfizer the other week for 16 to 39 year olds, I want to say. Yeah, yeah it's like anyway, the under so 40 category. The website crashed, and um, but I, I think all the bookings are gone now. I don't know if you can still. Friends of mine described it like trying to get tickets to a gig, <laughs> trying to get a Pfizer booking, like on the day. You're like just hit and refresh constantly on, on the web page to try and not get like a 404 or whatever the like, you know, server capacity Man, kind of thing is. Really got to get these Beyonce yeah. tickets. Wait, I mean, life saving vaccine. Sorry, 2021 seems to have dra- dragged on for some time now. Yeah, it was nuts. Like one of my colleagues, I think she started it. Uh, like you know, she starts work at some ungodly hour, like six thirty or seven or something. Started from then, and by about lunchtime, she'd confirmed an appointment. I just like trying to get through the stages. It's fucking. I went through a hot dog and got a GP appointment. Uh, um, see, I tried good, hot dog good for, for you. Yeah, I tried hot dog from when I was trying to get the vaccine. Like it was when it was the talk to a GP to get AstraZeneca if you want, but you're not eligible, quote unquote thing. And it was always it was a nightmare because I'd be like, oh, this place, all right, they do it. Uh, yes, I'd like a vaccine appointment. They're like, which one? I'm like, AstraZeneca. And they're like, you're too young. You can't book an appointment. Fuck but, off, if you like, but if you like it, you can talk to a GP. I'm like, be to see me an appointment. So I, yeah, I went against every fiber of my millennial being and I picked up the damn phone and called my GP and booked it in and it was smooth as shit. But yeah, um, no. Nah. Unnatural yeah. selection uh, pr- uh, expresses no preference for Hot Doc or Health Engine or any other um, internet based booking systems. I, I bring that up for no reason whatsoever. Um, <clears throat> so. Should not be on it. <laughs> There's not, not, not a real promise. Uh, it's, uh, it's, I mean, it's August, like it's fucking it's September nearly, right? Yep. Remember when they were like, and we job keepers gonna taper down in January because the pandemic's over. We don't need. Yeah. We don't we'll have pan- the vaccine by then, the and pandemic, everyone will be yeah. The pandemic will be over by March, and we don't need to worry. I'm just like astounded. That's just like it keeps happening. Well, I'm just like still disappointed by the fact that this is still fucking dragging on and it's it just seems like it's never going to go away like yeah yeah with it, Del- yeah, Delta to, to and, Scott new Morrison, we have to. and boosters mm. and like oh the modeling says we could open up a little bit at 70 to 80 percent but that only depends if there's 30 cases a day uh, so 70 to 80 percent vaccination and it's just yeah. like the goalposts just keep like moving and moving it's just like i don't know that it's ever going to get back to normal normal yeah, and that's what's insane, right? It's what it's one thing to be like taking JobKeeper as an example for them to be like, okay, we've got this, we've got this program, and we're going to be doing it for twelve months. Like, mm-hmm. so you think it'll be over in twelve months? We're doing it for twelve mm-hmm. months because in a year we'll have tackled all this, and as it's approaching that sort of mark, being like, we well and truly have not tackled this. <laughs> like lockdowns keep keep happening and then it's like oh do we reassess and maybe like uh continue going no no we said 12 months and uh if it's one thing the liberal party isn't it's promise breakers mm. we're just gonna ba- ba- we're just gonna barrel into this brick wall that we set ourselves for no particular reason mm-hmm. at 100 kilometers an hour that's the liberal way yes but now adam you're back to- yeah, you're about to bring a, something up. Flipping is an artistic expression under liberal national uh, party uh, mm. culture. It's actually um, their, their crest. It's just the back flipping man. It's the back flip. Yeah, yeah. just a guy doing Tony a 360. Abbott, Tony Abbott shirt fronting himself ad infinitum. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so that's probably an interesting point is that, I guess, co- uh, you know, this week uh, Scott Morrison made a a really interesting speech in Parliament because Parliament's still sort of going ahead, even though AC, the ACT is in lockdown. Um, 
where he said, oh, we have to come out of the cave and we have to learn to live with it. Um, that fucking coming out of the cave thing just was amazing. Me. To no end. And he was like, it's kind of <laughs> like The Croods. And I was like... Yes, the 2013 all, animated classic, The Croods, which not, have either of you seen? No, no nobody's seen it. seen it either. So, like... <laughs> Talking about just, a children's film from 2013 that nobody watched because it's a, <laughs> talking about coming out of the cat. I was just, like, thinking about some of the oratory from political leaders past, just like... You know, Declaration of Independence, four score and 20 years ago. Like, you know, that's, this is like the soaring heights of rhetoric. And then and Scott Morrison go, do, do anyone see the crew? Because <laughs> they're in the cave and he's coming out of the cave and we've got to come yeah. out of the cave. It's yeah, like, it's pretty meanwhile, amazing. the people in Perth that are like going to, headed down to the pub and going to the movies with their mates and doing sporting events together. Like, I don't know, this cave looks pretty fucking good, to be honest. I'm a big fan of the cave. Can we stay in the cave? Like, why would yeah. other states that have got these freedoms now open up and learn to, quote, learn to live with all the shit states like Victoria and New South Wales drowning in COVID and just be like, you got to learn to live with it like us. Yeah. And the other states are looking at us like, fuck, no, we don't. Yeah, yeah. Queensland's lose- looking at us like, I'm not going to fucking live with that. That's terrible. You guys yeah, suck at this. Just, let's just let it rip. Um, now, nah, the thing that that's the thing, mm. right? It's like the COVID strategy, the horizon or whatever they've set, which is 70% uh, for New South Wales, at least, and where they're going to start winding things back. Um, and then there's obviously, you know, the, the federal horizon as well, where there'll be softer lockdowns. And it's all based upon the stability modelling. But again, there are, that's, that's complicated. It's not a case of we'll just learn to live with it. It is because, a 60-page report, said, other states- which clearly no one has read or fully understood, because everyone has come out from the National Cabinet meeting going, yep, yep, yep. We all agreed based on the Doherty modelling. And then when you ask all of the people that were at the meeting, they all say very different things. <laughs> it's like, we all agreed that we're all going to have slightly different ideas of what this fucking yeah. means. Oh, yeah. We all agreed, like, in the meeting. Yeah. As soon as we leave the meeting, uh, you know, I'm, I rule the roost. <laughs> lots of smiling, lots of nodding. And um, I don't think any of us were smiling and nodding at the same things, but it's really good that we're looking agreed. Looking for the guy who was taking the minutes and it turns out no one was taking the minutes. Mm-hmm. So it's just, yeah. <laughs> Jeffrey's like, I don't know. I, I wasn't, you didn't tell me to do it. I, I, <laughs> or each of them all have their own minute takers and they're all taking like their minutes. Yeah, yeah. So what, what's he saying? Oh. This is what I heard. Anastasia Palaszczuk is a fucking boss bitch. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, I remember the Premier of Victoria saying that <laughs> it says Dan Andrews has a big knob I don't know mm, I don't know, I don't know if you look at the, the Doherty modeling it, it doesn't say that we're going to get to 70% and it's like off we go boys see you yeah. later on your bike it's freedom day yeah. <laughs> salute yeah. that's not going to happen no. you look at the UK you look at Israel you look at these countries that have done that and they've got 40,000 cases a day or whatever the bloody number is yeah so no, we're not going to do that. Turns out the ICU warden Hobart has 25 beds. Mm. If they have, you know, a couple of thousand cases, do you think those 25 ICU beds are going to be able to cope with that? Nah, she'll no. be right. She'll be right, mate. So this whole right. concept, big like, the beds. <laughs> a national plan isn't going to work. There's still going to have to be border closures. There's still going to have to be local lockdowns. Yeah. Because what's good for Melbourne isn't necessarily good for Dubbo, Orange, Townsville, Hobart. Um, yeah. fucking insert other regional city in here with a healthcare system that's, you know, it's Jenny and um, Jenny's mum who have been nurses there for like 30 years Jenny and, and that's Jenny's the only staff they've got. Who's also named Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's it's anyway. it's not, it's not, um, yeah, you're right. Different, different cities, different states have different mm. capacities. Um, it seems like WA uh, is more than content to like, lock off the rest of the country and just have their own local sort of economy continuing. Haven't, like, they're, they're haven't not they been, like, like fucking to secede for, like, a long time? <laughs> yeah. I mean... There's, and, like and a, they there's have... a faction of the Liberal Party in, yeah. in Western Australia that, that want to secede. But they have anyway. every right to at this stage. Like, the, 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 well, the West, Western Australian populace voted overwhelmingly to, you know, to support the Labor, you know, Mark McGowan's vision of fortress Western Australia, let's lock ourselves off. They're, like the public is more than happy to go along with that game plan for as long as it takes. So, mm. so could you imagine how politically unpopular it would be? Hey guys, 
who's going to let a bunch of cashed up New South Wales fucking idiots with COVID into the state because we need the tourism dollars. Like, no one's on board with that plan. It would be very politically no. and also practically just un like not doable and very unpopular. So I don't know and why. And also, why would you do that? Because, yes. like, it's not tourism because, like, BHB is their economy. <laughs> Right. Like, they're sitting on all of Australia's wealth just being like, hey, can we have some GST revenue, please? We're just, just de- <laughs> dig- digging it out of the ground. They, they yeah. don't need to see people for another decade once, once stuff starts burning down. <laughs> all right. Can we oh, yeah. just real quick, just because of the thought that I had, and it's slightly off topic, but can we circle back to the crudes for a second? Oh, God. Sure. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, because the thing that, like, really bugged me That's sort cool. of about... Yeah, about the Croods comment as well. Again, I haven't seen the movie, but I but as I, I think I said this on Twitter, I was like, I didn't realize that the Croods would eventually be the required reading for political discourse one day. But here we are. So I did a bit of like, I was oh like, all right, what the fuck is this movie about? It's the dumbest. It's the dumbest of all possible timelines. Yeah. So the Australian political discourse <laughs> is always the dumbest common denominator at any given stage. Mm. At no point are we actually ever talking about policy. It's it's all about the dumbest fucking thing yeah. that Scott Morrison brain farted while he was doing a national press conference, and now it's become the whole. About... Matt Canavan's really clever. Mm. I don't know what you're talking oh about. But what, but what really like kind of bugged me about it was that all right, he's referencing the Crudes, but he's kind of what I think's galling is that he thinks he is the daughter in this analogy. Because, like, referencing the Croods, right, from my, like, very base understanding of just Wikipedia, (laughs) is that there's, like, a family of cave people in a cave, and they've always stayed in the cave because it's fucking dangerous and new outside. Yeah, it's a classic hero's journey thing. No Moana, you can't leave the island, (laughs) slash Princess Tower, slash village, slash castle. All you, that kind and of then crap. They want to go and have an adventure, right? I'm assuming well, that it's classic I think heroes journey stuff. To have an adventure, or like you know, daughter, like the daughter of the family wants to go out and have an adventure. But I believe there's actually an element of if we stay here, if we keep doing the thing that we do of living in the cave, we will die. And the dad is all grumble, grumble, set in his ways, wants to keep keep things the status quo way while she has to convince everyone to leave the cave and go into the new thing to save them i'm like so scott you you're the dad you're the dad (laughs) you are the one like you know imagine that the out of the cave isn't letting coronavirus rip through the through the world that it's climate change yeah if you you're the dad Mate, like you're you aren't the bastion of little girls everywhere wanting to leave the cave. You're the cunt who's keeping us like yes. in the cave. You're, you're the ready and willing to die. Like you're no the anti-hero to... in this situation. Yeah. You are the conservative person who wants to keep things as they are, not the person who wants to yeah. strike out into the brave unknown. You're yeah, the dad. The you're not so Moana. Change. Yeah, you're the one who's like so afraid of change and is keeping us all in that same status quo, much to our detriment, damned be the consequences. Mm. Like, that's what offended me the most about him making this analogy to the Croods. I'm like, yeah, you haven't even like actually understood maybe where you are placed in this metaphor. <laughs> oh, what a dick. I hate him so much. <laughs> oh, my God. I hadn't actually picked up on that. This is the first time I'm hearing this news that you dislike our uh, Lord and Saviour, Prime Minister Scott Morrison. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh praise praise be him. No, just, I just, him. I want to compare it to other oratory. So so that four score and seven years ago is from the Gettysburg Address. Just to listen yeah, to the yeah, first line, couple of lines of it from Abraham Lincoln. From Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, November 19th, 1863. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. 
Have you guys seen the Croods? <laughs> it's kind of like yeah, it's like the Croods. It's like the Croods. What is that? DreamWorks. It's not even We're a, come out of the cave. It's kind of that knockoff Pixar bullshit that my daughters made me see in 2013. Well, that's the thing. Makes me wonder. Did he see it in 2013? And he's just for some reason it's the the reference he's decided to make. Or has he only just recently seen the 2013 film? The Cru- like, had he watched it the night before? And it just he's watched it, Tom, and not the analogy. You have. Or is it one of his like favorite movies that he's watched a lot? I, I assume like, it's yeah. just recently come up on Netflix. Him and the missus have had a night in, you know, <laughs> taking a break from ruining the country yeah. and not holding a hose, and uh, and he's decided to watch the Croods. You're assuming it's just not a Liberal Party staff member being like, you know, in some backroom chat being like, it's kind of like the Croods. We've got to come out of the cave. And he's like, I love that analogy. That is an Haven't excellent line. And it's certainly not mm. demeaning and calling as citizens of Australia, for whom I'm also their prime minister, calling them cave people. That is definitely yeah. the only, that is a perfect analogy that can in no way be misread or misunderstood. In the book. For, 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 the, for the government, that's all about like, Image and marketing, they really do just they suck at it. eat their own assholes constantly. Yeah. They're just so bad at it. Yeah. How is this bad at everything? Well, well, they appointed Mr. I've been fired from every marketing job I've had as the head of their party. I mean, even a broken clock is right two times a day. It's just like they're just objectively just they're just bad. they're just the worst at every at every aspect of their job you might be able to like sometimes you know you see a political figure and go well i don't agree with donald trump but you know in this one rare instance he accidentally did the right thing you know or you know mitt romney he's an honorable man with whom i disagree about basically everything you know <laughs> there's no there's none of, they're just like they're bad at their jobs and they're just also bad people and and bad at telling people about their jobs like they're yeah. just they're just just they're zero on the D D stats of this fucking character it's just charisma zero strength zero endurance zero <laughs> competence zero it's just everything is nil <laughs> nil across the board yeah yeah they rolled natural one for natural ones all, for everything. all their stats <laughs> and just had to come up with something uh-huh the thing, the thing that I would like them to do is to properly, when they look at these stats, is actually talk about the death rate and actually go and start to. And I reckon this is what we need to start doing in the national discourse: is go, well, yeah, okay, let's come out of your cave. Let's go with that analogy. But Why if we come out of Plato's the cave, Plato's cave, Plato's cave is like a philosophical thing that you could reference, which would be like more fitting. But the crudes. The Croods. It keeps it keeps it real, um, George. You know, to those people uh, in the Australian populace, to those young millennials. Um, <laughs> but look, I mean, I don't there know. There is no I, I think appetite. A- Let me tell you how much appetite there is for deaths in the community and a bunch of people in emergency rooms. Fucking none whatsoever. So I don't What's know. It's going to happen, even I, if okay, you're like, vaccinated at eighty percent. I just you're don't like know. The, the- Who's going to be, no one's going to be happy with that. No, like everyone's going to be unhappy with this. So with 70%, this is what some of the, there's a couple of ways it could go according to the Doherty modelling. With 70% vaccine coverage of the adult population and partial public health measures, the Doherty predicts about 385,983 symptomatic cases and 1,457 deaths in six months. Now with optimal public health measures, but still no lockdowns. They believe the numbers can be reduced to 2737 and about 13 deaths in the same period. So you're looking at anywhere between... But like, the problem is, when it talks about... To- the thing with all this modelling is they talk about, like, optimal health measures. So that means contact tracing and, you know, that means all these sorts of things, right? Low, low case numbers, all that sort of stuff. But the more cases there are, the more numbers of cases there are, the less those public health measures work well right if you've got a thousand cases a day of coronavirus contact tracers are just, are going to be struggling to keep up right there's you know you still have masking you still have restrictions on you know caps on people and where they can go and what they can do and like it doesn't look like the kind of freedom that people were having in mind when when all of this conversation started around vaccination um 
And like, I don't know. It seems like a lot of the conversation has turned to just being like, well, I just guess we got to be okay with people dying. Just like some, some people are going to die. And, uh, so fingers crossed it's not me or anyone I know. Uh, hopefully it's just anti-vaxxers. Like, I don't, like, I don't know. It just seems really defeatist, yeah. doesn't it? Like, well, yeah, and that's the thing, it's, right? Yeah. That's the, yeah, as soon as people are saying, like, yeah, I think, um, Adam, you made the really great point. I remember on Facebook, I think it was the other day, of mm. just, yeah, that as soon as people start talking about learning to live with the virus and everything like that, it's where you're like, okay, that's when you are saying however many people die from this thing per year is good. Yeah. Tick. We give up. Thumb, like, thumbs up. And if we haven't done absolutely everything we can to mitigate that risk for the most vulnerable people in our communities, then it's unacceptable. Yeah. Like, the, like, yeah, the dream of that no one dies from this disease ever again, ever, is unrealistic. Yeah, totally but, unrealistic. yeah, you have to you have to do I your just, best. I just think that the marketing spin, <laughs> and it was funny, because I made that comment on Facebook before Scott Morrison actually... I'm pretty sure it's before Shout he said all that. Crude's analogy. And he said it like literally the next day. I was like, oh my God. But the point being is, you know, if you want to get up there and say, learn to live with it, if you want to tell the Australian population that they can do that, then you need to give them the numbers. You need to give them the risk analysis. You can't just say and give them a truth about what might happen in any given circumstance. You can't just say, yeah, she'll be right. We've got to, we've got to fight our way through this what, what and it'll be okay. What that says to me like, is, is they're getting on the media. They're trying to set the narrative. They're trying to manufacture consent. And say, like, we all agree this is the part that we've given up. We're no longer, like, we're not competent to, as, as government officials to get us back down to COVID zero. We can't do that. We're fucked up. And the only way out of this is basically just getting everyone on board with the idea that a bunch of people are going to die. Because we, fuck, we fucked up too hard. That, no. It's not recovery. Not even saying that. That's the thing. They're not saying. Because it's unpalatable not to say that. The mm. But that's what they're really saying. That is, what yeah. they, that is the underlying idea underneath what they're saying. They're trying to get us used to this idea. They're just like, maybe granddad's going to die, but it'll be fine. Don't worry yeah, about it. We've got to live yeah, with it. I don't, yeah, we've remember. got to learn to live with it unless it kills you. In which case, yeah. you won't have learned to live with it because you'll be dead in that scenario. Yeah, but... remember, remember when the like the the messaging was, uh, well, maybe grandma has to die for the economy. <laughs> yeah, that's what they're, they're trying, trying to get back to. Again. HSBC, long enough. <laughs> HSBC is like, mate, we've had three quarters without a fucking profit. Okay. Grandma needs to die. We need to start trading again. <laughs> like, and then they're like, look, you're right. But also that's our voter base. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Legitimately, yeah. yeah. Good luck. Uh, See how palatable killing your own fucking voters is at the next election. Well, yeah, but I mean, their own voters are exactly the ones not getting vaccinated. That need and, to die. <laughs> like, like, they're all the ones that are going to with yeah. the measures that they're suggesting, and they're also all on board with it. Like, it's really weird. It's, yeah, it's honestly but I guess, baffling. you know. People voting against their own self-interest has just been, that's just history. Well, it, goes, it goes to show, like, you know, how much the rampant capitalism of the last 70 years has entered the zeitgeist of Western culture. Like, yep. as, it, um, it is a me, it favorite... is a, an individual-centric mm. culture where it's about me, what I can do, yes. my freedoms, my, my fucking wealth, me, 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 mm. and, and fuck the person living next door or you know, fuck my family. Like there's a there's a there's not a a realization that we're a society and we're all in this together. But it actually increases mm. tribalism. It doesn't, you know, uh, reduce tribalism, it increases tribalism. There's, which um, you know Yeah. You might book- say we live in a society. Yeah. There, there, there's a book by T. M. Scanlon <laughs> called What We Owe to Each Other. And it's about the philosophy the, the morality of, of right and wrong from the perspective of you know, li- living in a society with other people, like what we owe each other as a society. Um, and it seems like at no point have any of our politicians ever engaged in this kind of thinking. It's all about political expediency and right and wrong and winners and losers and, you know, and political advantage and who can who can be the prime minister and who can be the top dog. It's just at no point have we ever made any sort of calculus or, or done any deep thinking as a society around what we owe to each other. What, what the obligations of a society is. 
um, Denise Ravel, who, who I follow on Twitter, has a saying. She says, neoliberal's going to neoliberal. Like, this is what they do. The, the whole artifice that they've constructed is one of political self-interest and um, profit and I- individual liberty at the expense of literally everything and everyone else. Everyone else. Like, mm. It's kind of like caveman Esque, if you want to go right back, like it's kind of like tied all in a nice little bow. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like it's kind of like we're reverting to our base instincts almost. Maybe it is really like the crudes, and Mm. we have to not stay in our own little. Oh, there goes my mic. Uh, Stay in our own little unit in the cave, and we need to go out and like meet the rest of the world and like (sighs) give what we owe to each other. You know, I'm coming around on the crudes analogy. Maybe it's deep. Back. Maybe it's like when my year nine religion teacher made us watch The Matrix. And it's like, man, it's fucking... He skipped all the action scenes, which is very annoying as a 14-year-old. It's all, but it's all about Jesus. It's, it's a lot about Jesus. And the yes, black this, and white tiles movie. on the floor mm. just shows the black and white choice one has between God and the devil. Oh, yes, and this, it's this all movie of it is very by, fucking deep. If you watch it yes. twelve times, it's yes, this extremely movie deep. Made by, made by two trans women is very much all about Jesus. Well, that was pre the trans women <laughs> thing, so that's that's why they were showing it in schools at the time. It was about Jesus, Tom. So yeah, well, we, while you guys were watching that, we watched species. <laughs> excuse me, species two on a bus. Um, which was wait, wait, what? <laughs> I've spoken about this before. Yeah, it's, it's, I've definitely heard this story. Tell, tell us the story. We watched, we watched Species 2 on a bus. Have I once. just forgotten? That's am- I love that. That's amazing. Like, it was like we were coming back in dribs and drabs, and so we were just sitting there in the parked bus, and then the bus driver's like, well, like, can we watch something with TV? And he's like, yeah, I'll just put, put whatever was on was on. And it was Species 2. Why was that and on so the bus? Boys kept coming back into the bus. It's an old boys' school, by the way, with like right. year eights, year nines. And so we're all sitting on the bus, and I'm like, what's this movie? And then, obviously, the English teacher, Mrs. Leary, she gets on, she sits down, and she doesn't really know what's going on. She's not paying attention. And um, the bus starts going, and then it gets, you know, into probably the first 20 minutes of and Species 2. Gets and then the fucking the boobs. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, gets into all the boobs and the sex scenes and uh, the violence. The, the, the first scene is, like, he's having a threesome with, like, two chicks, and, like, one of them yeah, goes to the bathroom, yeah, and, and all of a sudden has, like, an expedited pregnancy, and the baby, yeah. like, punches itself out of her stomach. Yeah, because the and second then the English teacher's the, like, uh, no, 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 no. Yeah, <laughs> we'll the turn second, this off. The second one's where, like, the oh, astronaut goes to Mars and then yeah. gets infected, infected by the alien, and then he jizzes alien into these two women, and it yeah. turns into a massive clusterfuck, leading, culminating in one of the greatest moments, I think, of cinema history, where Michael Madsen uh, is with the, the group of people where they enter this building that is very, like, alien, because I guess the creature in Species was also designed by H.R. Geiger, as well as the alien from Aliens. Uh, but, you know, like, that's a gore, sticky mess of people who've all burst open to, like, birth these creatures. And Michael Madsen, straight-faced, giving the most amazing performance ever, just says, wow, looks like the maternity ward. Pause for effect. <laughs> from hell. <laughs> and I was like, brilliant. 10 out of 10. Give that man the $10,000. This contest is over. Oh, cut, 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 the original one had, like, um, who's Forrest the- Whitaker, Sir Ben Forrest- Kingsley. Ben Kings, that like this was ridiculous cast. You're like, how did amazing you, cast? Why did you guys sign up for this? Yeah, Alfred Molina is in it. Amazing, like, yeah, um, brilliant. Which is probably a good way to segue actually to our, our last story of, of uh, uh, today, uh, which is uh, you know, and look, swings around about here in our natural selection. We 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 talk about um, you know some of the deepest and darkest things of the world, and we try to make light of it. But sometimes there are gifts that are given to us by uh, the people of Michigan, and uh, in this case here, uh, you know, um, there are still, whether you like it or not, throughout the world, uh, there are still hard copy collections of pornography. Now, it might be your dad, might be you, uh, that has you know a couple of VHSs or some DVDs. Sitting uh, under a box somewhere under your bed, um, but they are apparently hard copy porn is actually increasing in value. So and there was one gentleman. Hard copy. It's a, it's a hard copy. Saving uh, saving that one up, weren't you? <laughs> that's a better answer. Two thirty. <laughs> there was a gentleman in uh, in Michigan uh, who I was 
Probably that's not a, a word I would use. A human male. A human male. He uh, divorced from his wife and was living with his parents uh, for a couple of months. And um, as he was moving out of his parents' house, he noticed something missing. And it was, in fact, his hard copy porn collection. He asked his parents, he said, guys, where's my porn collection? To which they said, <laughs> I'm going to find the quote. Um, well, they said they, they threw it out, but uh, <laughs> there was email evidence presented uh, to say, what is it out of? Uh, frankly, David, uh, I, his father, did you a big favor getting rid of all this stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, they just, you know, they just threw out all his, you know, his, his magazines and VHSs and all that sort of stuff of, of pornography. Kind of inconsiderate, you know, throwing out someone else's things. It's, pretty, it, you know, without rude. consulting them. It's pretty, it's pretty awful. Pretty crude. Mm, very crude. And- very crude. Turns out, though, <laughs> I think that's actually the name of the dad character in the No, crew, it's so not. Shut it up. up. I think it is. Played Fuck by Nicolas off. Cage, no God less. damn, I hate Scott Morrison. God damn it. He makes everything dumber. Turns out that porn collection, uh, worth $29,000. What? Hot US. diggity daffodil. US. $29,000 US. Now, does that, uh, that the resale value? Like it's gone up, or is that the price that he paid for? And it's just an, and he's amassed twenty nine thousand dollars worth of pornography. It was independently valued as a part of, and what happened next was so he to took some, him to court. They went to, he took him to court. Today. Now I think at auction, yeah. Now the DD mm. Big Jugs uh, sixty nine. Um, I think you'll find this one fetches over five hundred pounds at auction. Yeah, I'm just wondering. What, fuck, did he have like? An original print of Debbie Does Dallas or something like one of the like really famous classic pornographic. It wasn't just films. wasn't just VHSs. He also had magazines, magazines and um, stuff. Yeah, like print print material. So I guess no matter what it is, print, like print material sounds like it's being described in a mm. criminal. Yeah, I was gonna say print material. Uh, for those of you who don't know what a magazine is, it's like an iPad but made of paper. It's a printed out iPad. Um, yeah, yeah, printed out iPad. Uh, infinite battery life, but not very interactive, and the brightness can be terrible. That's true. The brightness really yeah. suffers on uh, on paper, and uh, mm. and as uh, like single functional. Obviously, you can't play Angry Birds yeah. on it. Um, yeah, no, yeah, single functional. Uh, you know, no zoom or anything. Well, zoom, you can like hold it closer to your eyes, but you know what yeah, though? Like excellent that. DPI. Like the resolution on a book, fantastic DPI, very yeah, good. Yeah. I have yeah, to yeah. say, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, brilliant um but yeah so this story it, it's an interesting one because it sounds incredibly sad when you hear it just at face value because uh, you know the way this the way this story from the guardian starts is you know saying a, a judge in Mich- in michigan has ordered a couple to pay thirty thousand four hundred and forty one dollars to their son for throwing out his pornography collection u.s district judge paul maloney's decision this week came after came eight months after david working 43 won a lawsuit against his parents so while you're seeing like a middle-aged man suing his parents for throwing out his booby mags like that makes you go oh god that's sad but at the same time like if my parents just compl- like i probably wouldn't take them to a lot of things that have to happen before i took them to court but i'd be pretty miffed if like my parents threw out something of mine that was worth thirty thousand dollars just without considering cons- like you know consulting me and just them assuming it's junk like this reminds me of all those stories of like i think there was one a while ago where a, uh like a guy who'd gone off to uni so he was in his early 20s or something like that discovered that his mum had gone through his like childhood room and was like either throwing out or selling a bunch of his stuff and put up some magic the gathering cards that were really rare for nothing and people online were like you mean there's a black lotus for like five dollars or whatever and he Mm. saw the listing and was like do you realize how much that card's worth? Like, it's worth thousands. And, like, yeah, I, I think they managed to stop it. But you'd be pretty pissed off if, like, my something mom, of yours that's actually quite valuable. My mum, I how think, dumb you think it is. I think my mum must have gotten rid of my Pokemon cards from back in the day. And some of oh, those are worth, like, oh, hundreds, thousands yeah, of dollars each. Wow. Like a Charizard like a, from back yeah. in the day, which I had. I fucking had a, a shiny Charizard. 
Yeah, I was going to say, if you had like an original one, hang on. So like you had one of the, the sparkly ones? So, yeah, sparkly Charizard. Excuse me while we do some Googling. Dun, 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 oh, I'm just, yeah, having a look. Uh, why, why are you looking so, for that? What, what, holo cards. So like oh, the holographic -y sort of one. So like a Charizard legendary. Yeah. I'm seeing ones here on eBay for like 700 from bucks. From 2002? Yeah, yeah, that's bucks. what I found. $700, yeah, for just one of those cards. One, one here for $2,200. Uh, a night out at the uh, yeah. casino? Oh, I mean, I've you got a bunch of money. I've got a bunch of pop vinyls that are like the exclusive collection still mint in their box. That's my house deposit in the future, you guys. <laughs> no, no, it's not. <laughs> Tom. So the no, the question not. is, do you reckon this guy from Michigan, mm -hmm. do you reckon he's uh, going to be invited around for Christmas or uh, turning that invite's off the table? I, well, I, I, I think he's mm, dead to them, surely. Yeah, I mean, when, you for, when, when the courts have forced you to hand your son $30,000, I mean, that, that's gonna be an awkward Christmas. Uh, like, um, I don't know. Or you'd um, expect. Can you, can you pass me the salad and also my check? <laughs> yeah, or like, you'd just be like really salty about like the quality of gifts that year from the sun. Because you'd be like, we know, I we know. know you that, yeah, you know, you, <laughs> we know you got cash. Yeah, I think that's it for the relationship, right? Like, it, like, as soon as you take your parents to court. Yeah, that's that's a real relationship, yeah, Bender. It's, yeah, it rela it's, it's, it's a real, like, depending on what it's for, it's, that's, uh, yeah, I think you, you're really um, fucking burning that bridge mm. before you I mean, was. He was living there for 10 months. Like, yeah. he, he, they, they, picked, they took him back in he after his divorce. He probably saved 30 grand just on, on, on that. living yeah, there. Yeah. On that. Uh, well, that was part of the argument uh, that the parents were giving. I mean, their defense was a thing saying that as his landlords, they felt they had the rights to do so. And to which the judge said, no. there is no statute anywhere that says a landlord can just throw out a tenant's shit. Yeah, if anything, willingly. that makes it worse. <laughs> like, yeah, like it's just like, no, no, there's no precedence for that. Uh, Your Honor, uh, it's because it was a totally normal legal arrangement that I threw out my son's porn. <laughs> just like, no, no, none of that makes any sense. That makes it yeah. much worse. If it was a so tenant, maybe, there would be much worse. There's maybe a whole angle of this that we're not considering of like, I don't know, yeah, he lived there for 10 months. So maybe they were just like, I don't know, maybe he's a really loud person porn consumer maybe they were just like nah we don't no we can't take more months of this we're saying like, that the uh, the magazines the hard copies were actually well used which no, might have been stop could have been well in, used or at least like less like you know, like uh, either well used or just i don't know maybe he has a really ball and sound system and uh you know it's kind of hard not to hear what what was it called again, George? Uh, uh, DD Big nine. Jug, yeah, yeah, DD Big Jug sixty nine or whatever, just through all the walls of the house. <laughs> sixty nine double D. This time it's personal. Um, it's I, I I'm I'm on this guy's side, right? And obviously the judgment was found in his favor. No, right? well, you should yeah. throw out thirty grand worth of stuff. Yeah, they threw out like a major asset of. His. Yeah. Like whether or not he knew at thick, first that it was worth 30 grand, that's an interesting thing. Thick, I, that's what asset. I'd like to know. If he's one of the, yeah, if he knew he was sitting yeah, on 30 a worth of porn, or if it was just, you threw out my porn, this isn't fair, I'll take you to court because I don't know, yeah, it's in Michigan, like Americans suing people for everything, sort of thing of like, I'll just do it. And then an independent assessor looked at it and said, oh, yeah, there's about 30K worth of porn. And he was like, ka ching. Um, <laughs> Amazing! You know how much porn I could get now for that money. <laughs> it's, a month's um, subscription to someone on OnlyFans might only be ten dollars. I, <laughs> so I agree. Much for that. I agree that like they shouldn't have thrown it out. It is like shitty and puritanical. But also like you're a grown man with a porn collection, and maybe they're trying to do you a favor, and maybe that's why your wife left you. Oh, I don't know. Okay. I mean, I don't know. Kind of wow. I don't know. I'm just like. We don't have the answers, guys. We're just throwing stuff out there. Get it together, mate. <laughs> uh, lol. I don't know about you guys, but I don't have just 30K worth of maybe anything just sitting around like that. So, you know what? He's doing something right. It's... What? Hmm.
<laughs> just a thirty thousand dollar asset in the house. I don't think I have ever just like a thirty thousand dollar asset just sitting around like no. a thing that's like, oh yeah, I could sell this on for thirty k. This is my nest egg or whatever. Heck yeah. no. So I guess he's doing something I'm I'm not, and he's the one with the thirty thousand dollar asset, and I'm not. So I think you, you know who's the real winner here. Are we saying that he's because I can't really. He's not superior to you in some way. That's the vibe that I'm getting from what you're saying there, Tom. Well, I think that's, you know... The, you're saying, like, the... he's got $30,000 to spend, so therefore he must be doing something right. Well, if it's, it if, it's in, if it's in a physical pay. asset like that, so, like, you know, it's in, it, was in his porn- <laughs> it was in his pornography collection rather than liquid cash just in the bank, then he wasn't using the value of that pornography at least for any kind of support for himself. He only found this out because he was moving out of the parents' house, presumably into some form of accommodation. So clearly, like, he was getting some wins after the 10 months, still with a $30,000 asset sitting in his cupboard. Um. There's a song oh, by got really A double S his... capitalized. Thank you very much. Sorry, sorry. Either that or he, he got really sick of his parents walking into his room without knocking and just got a bit awkward. So he's like, I, I need to leave now. I mean, that's true. And maybe again, that was the motive for throwing out the porn yeah, and a lot of uh, porn you know, lying around just yeah. bathing in it like a, you know, a Donald Duck in the diving into the coins. Um, <laughs> so there, there's a song out there called um, Goodbye Porn Collection. By Bobby Mitchell. It's a comedy song from back in the day. It's a good song. Oh, I'd cool. rec- recommend it. Uh, it's probably on um, Spotify or your music streaming service of choice. But um, uh, it, it, it sort of uh, it, it describes the process of, you know, um, make, becoming a man and making the, des- the decision to part with your physical porn collection. And I think it aptly, aptly describes this moment. So if, you, if you'd like to go and stream that, um, you're more than welcome to. First one's free. First one's free, Bobby. Um, I think, uh, was there anything else that you guys wanted to mention or was that it? I mean, we haven't touched on anything that happened in Afghanistan this week, but... Uh, it was all it's bad. A, it's a no matter what, it pit bad. of it all despair. Bad. Why would you end yeah. the show like that? No, no, I know. No, that was, was just more me pointing out of how much time we dedicated to the Michigan porn man, and we did not touch on anything that happened in Afghanistan. Oh, yeah. Did we talk about cancer as well? Did we talk about <laughs> did any of the kids dying of cancer? No. Jesus Christ. Yep. You know, people are still yeah, starving to death. Terrible. Yep. Yeah, that's still a thing. Jeff Bezos hasn't ended all the world's problems today. And uh, what else is terrible? SpaceX, he, though. He chose not to. What He's else? chosen not to every day. What else? What else? What else we got? What else? Uh, some people just lose their eyes. So, like, that's they just fall out, or is no, it they bleed behind the couch, or because they like, in the fridge? That's usually like the spot that you know when you lose blind. something. Oh, okay. Oh, we've got a fun story here about human trafficking. Do you want to bring that up, Tom, at the last minute, or probably not? We'll uh, save it for next uh, week. Do we? Uh, I wasn't aware of the human trafficking story, but cool. no, it was it was a joke, obviously. Oh, it's an right. Awful, okay, awful thing. Yes, that is a terrible, terrible thing. On the uh, Jeff Bezos thing, I do want to talk about um, the the salt that's in the air um, on the the space contracts that are out out at the moment. But we'll do that another time, maybe next week. Salty uh, space contracts. Salty uh, space contracts. You know what all those words mean. <laughs> So yeah, I understand the definition of all of those words yeah. separately, but yeah, I don't he's know. not just suing the U.S. government. Put it that way. Right. Oh, cool. Um, and uh, let's see. The U.S. government wins. Does he have to pay taxes? Because I think I might back the U.S. government on that one. Maybe. Uh, and uh, it's just a uh, just a story here about um, infidelity, spousal infidelity, and uh, oh, cool. bro- broken marriages. On that note. We have been, we are, and we always will be our natural selection. Make sure you visit us at our salubrious home on the web at naturalshow.com. Make sure you follow us on all the bullshit social medias that are ruining the world that have, do, or ever will exist at Unnatural Show. It's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, Pinterest. <laughs> Make sure you follow me on Instagram and Twitter at George Zavos. You can follow me on Twitter at Tom D. Heath. You can follow me on Instagram at AC Drain. I don't know if we have a Pinterest. I don't think that's right. Um, thanks for listening, guys. Love your faces. We'll see you next week. Do we have a blender? I don't think is that, that a, is, is that what a you blender? think it is. <laughs> Wait, a blender is a dating app, isn't it? Yes, it is. Blend- 
Oh, and it's also like three D modeling software. I was going to say, yeah, what? So that's what I was thinking. Like, is yeah, there... it's, I've, I've used I've used Blender, but I'm like, I don't think you can have a, a Blender, Adam. <laughs> like, I don't know. Yeah, catch us on Grinder <laughs> at our natural show. <laughs> Thanks for listening, guys. Love your faces. We'll see you next week. I mean, that could be a way to a new market if we get if we just put ourselves on Bumble and just be like, yeah, you can totally swipe right another natural selection. Please, isn't, no. Bumble, isn't Bumble the one though? Wouldn't can you please Bumble... just let me end the show and we'll talk about Wait, it? After. We'll at the bottom of this, isn't Bumble no. the one where like it they've like really marketed it around like women have to talk to you yeah. first, yeah, kind yes. of thing to stop all the fuckheads. So if we yeah. use that as a marketing tool, the audience then has to come to us before we can pitch that's right ladies line up yeah so no probably not the best idea Mm. also it's probably just a bad idea anyway because it seems like online dating is just um i only have bad ideas i'm sorry you know after 12 years that's on me i should have remembered yeah that tracks okay bye bye man bye 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 bye